A burning building, a watchtower, drowning. These vignettes haunt the girl, and she finds herself disoriented in a busy street. Next thing she knows, she's at the place she's working at. Then, nothing. The girl eventually wakes up, and her eyes are drawn to the date on the calendar, August 4. She can't remember anything or anyone, not even herself. Suddenly, a young boy with a weird costume and elf ears appears from out of nowhere. This floating munchkin's talking to her, but the girl only gasps in surprise. Hearing her, another woman, presumably her co-worker, hurries into the room, asking her if something's the matter. She doesn't recognize the woman, who seems to know her well. After encouraging the girl to rest up, the woman leaves. Before the girl could even make sense of her situation, the young boy reappears, floating over her while wondering who's going to get her. At this point, the still silent and still perplexed girl can only gawk at his elf-looking kid, perhaps paralyzed by fear and confusion. Suddenly, the handsome black-haired Shin arrives and asks her if she is alright. She stares at him, noting that he's another unfamiliar face. He promptly tells her to get up and offers to walk her home. Right after, another boy named Toma enters the room. He is just as handsome as Shin, but of course, he's a blondie. Toma's less brash than Shin is and asks the girl how she is. When she doesn't answer, Shin calls her out for spacing out and being unresponsive. Seeing how pressured she got, Toma comes to her defense and scolds Shin for his coldness. The two then suggests that she stop by the hospital to get checked. She initially agrees, but the unknown boy quickly warns her against this. To him, going to the hospital will only complicate things, so he proposes that she make an excuse. It looks like she's the only one who can see and hear him, but at that moment, he's nowhere to be seen. Nonetheless, she heeds his advice. Shin and Tama are still worried about her, so they escort her home. Based on the boy's conversation, they go way back, but the girl can't keep up at all. She remains silent throughout their walk until they eventually reach her house. Like with everything else, she doesn't recognize it. Tama and Shin offers to stay with her a little longer, seeing as she looks nothing short of lost. The girl just assures them that she's fine and that she will go to bed as soon as she gets in. At home, the floating young boy reappears and recounts to her the events that led to the present. First, he introduces himself as Orion. He comes from a spirit world separate from hers. Orion then tells her that she lost all her memories before August 1st. He confesses that when he came into this world, he bumped into this girl's spirit, causing her memories to vanish. In place of her lost memories, the young boy, Orion himself, is trapped in her soul. He apologizes and assures her that he will do his best to help her regain her memories. Fortunately, Orion tells her how to retrieve it. By interacting with people she might know, she will gradually regain her memories. However, if she stays at the hospital, she won't be able to interact with others and eventually lose the ability to eat, sleep, talk, and even breathe. Later that night, Orion wonders whether Tama and Shin work in the same place as the young girl. That would explain why they showed up earlier. If so, he wonders if they are starting to suspect her. To move forward with their plan, the young girl and Orion both agree that she should continue her job. She organizes her thoughts and improvises a plan to avoid suspicion while working at the cafe. First, she searches all the contacts in her cell phone's data but finds only 5 contacts. For some reason, almost all of her previous data were erased. Fortunately, all of her work contacts are still there. Staring at the picture of her with her co-workers, she worries if she will ever regain her memories. Meanwhile, a man with long green hair and a crazed look stands outside the young girl's house. He laughs medically, breaking the silence of the dead night. The next day, the young girl wakes up and is greeted by Orion. He asks her if she remembers anything from the previous day, to which she answers yes. Relieved, Orion urges her to hurry as she will be late for work. The young girl hurries to her workplace, Meido no Hitsuji. Three women outside the cafe stare at her as she enters the place. The cafe manager Waka welcomes her and Iki a workmate. Waka orients them on the things to be done that day and reminds them that if some customers are rude to the female staff, they must report the incident to him immediately. Why you ask? So he can kill them, of course. With that odd speech aside, Waka instructs his employees to do well for the day. Once the boss is gone, Iki openly stares at the girl and asks if she is alright. As always, she gives short 
short responses while Iki maintains his very intense stare. She is confused by his gaze, and even Orion comments that he has been looking at her real creepily. As the cafe opens, the girl is having trouble working. She doesn't remember how to do her tasks. Orion guides her through some of her duties, but he can't help her make a parfait. Luckily, Iki demonstrates the process to her. While doing so, a memory fragment returns to her, an instance of Iki helping her make a parfait. Uncomfortable with the situation, she steps away. However, she accidentally knocks the glasses and wounds her finger. She is unaware that the three suspicious girls are watching them. Iki treats her injury. Afterward, he tells her that, unlike most women, she seems to be not affected by his gaze. Interrupting the awkward conversation, Kent, a co-worker, enters the employee's room and is greeted by the two. Iki leaves them to return to his work. Kent starts a weird conversation about the poly effect or, more simply, clumsiness. He prides himself on how he talks logically and insists that the young girl go home and rest. However, she explains to him that she wants to get used to her job and wants wants to stay. Kent explains the situation to Waka, and he allows her to remain and learn her duties. As the hours go by, she gradually grasps her job and provides a good work ethic, leaving her satisfied for the day. On the way home, the young girl chats with Orion about her day's progress. Suddenly, three girls corner her. They are the three girls present at the cafe earlier. They accuse her of breaking her promise. This triggers a memory from the young girl. A girl holding a pair of scissors unhesitantly cuts off her hair. Upon remembering it, the girl trembles in fear. She loses consciousness and falls to the ground, but not before seeing a beautiful woman with blonde hair staring at her, filled with hatred. After regaining consciousness, the young girl gets up. She looks around in panic, but Orion assures her they have already left. At home, Orion says that based on her recent encounter and regained memory, there are some people she must be wary of. She encourages her to keep her memory loss a secret. The following day, Sawa and Mine, her co-workers, greet the young girl at the cafe. They also ask her if she is ready to be working. She tells them she has been doing well. Sawa tells her that if she ever needs help, she can always ask them. Them. Sawa and Mine tell the young girl they are concerned about the strange aura. She has been spacing out a lot lately. For a moment, the young girl worries about being discovered. She sighs with relief when the girls change their topic. Now they are discussing conducting a meeting to prepare for the trip. As planned during the newcomer's orientation, Mado Cafe's employees will be participating in a journey in a bid to boost employees' relationship with each other. The young girl worries about her condition as she is still not in top shape. Quietly, she devises a possible plan with Orion. Their discussion is interrupted when Kent calls her out for muttering by herself. He then tells the young girl to bring the cake for a customer celebrating his birthday. While every employee sings a birthday song for the customer, the young girl recovers another fragment of her memory. This time, it involves Shin sitting next to her as they light up a sparkler. Unexpectedly, he tells her in a distorted voice that he has killed someone. This recollection gives her chills and ruins her mood for the rest of the day. After work hours, all the employees gather around for the meeting concerning the outing. Afterward, the young girl and Orion head home and discuss the dangers of their secret being discovered. Absent-mindedly, she almost gets run over by a truck. Luckily, a mysterious-looking man with long green hair saves her. He then asks her if she remembers him, but leaves before she can answer. The young girl and Orion seem to feel something peculiar about the strange man. On the day of the trip, the group travels via train to their destination. Upon reaching the area, rain starts to pour, bringing their much-awaited trip to a halt. The sound of raindrops causes memories to return to the young girl. She sees herself with Kent at a festival, and they seem to be more than friends. This recollection only adds to her confusion. Meanwhile, Waka predicts that the rain will soon stop. Moments later, it does. Waka attributes this to his ability to smell the rain, much to the awe of the others. During their walk to the mountain, the young girl keeps staring at Kent, which the latter notices. Orion encourages her to ask Kent about the festival for a possible hint to her memory. Yet, the man seems to have no idea what she's talking about. Upon reaching the villa, the young girl and Orion conclude that her 
our memories are all distorted, making it more difficult to determine if a recollection is accurate. During the night, the group begins their sports mini-tournament, pitting pairs against each other. They start by playing air hockey. Everyone enjoys the game. Later, the group begins to walk to the top of the mountain to witness the meteor shower. Exhausted, the young girl can't keep up with the group's pace and is left behind. Unexpectedly, Shin awaits her as he knows she is exhausted. Reminded of her recollection, she is scared of him and runs away. Unable to see in the dark, she falls off the cliff while Orion tries to save her. Some time later, the young girl wakes up in a hospital with a bandage wrapped around her neck. Shin enters the room and tells her that she has been sleeping for some time. As she looks at the clock to see the time and the date, she is shocked to find out that she has returned to August 1. Shin comes to her and, to her surprise, kisses her. He then leaves to attend to her discharged papers. At this point, the young girl realizes that Orion is no longer with her. After settling everything for her release, Shin takes the young girl home. As they reach her house, he notices she is having trouble accessing her place. She forgets that she gave him her house key for safekeeping, making him realize that something is amiss with her. He decides to stay with her for a while and observe. Through their conversation, he suspects she has lost her memory. The following day, Shin arrives at the young girl's place and tests her by falsely claiming it's their anniversary. The young girl nods. Shin tells her that they've only started dating three months ago. He concludes that she has lost her memory and only tries to match their conversation to keep her secret. Unable to deny anymore, the young girl admits his claims. Despite uncovering her secret, Shin agrees to help the young girl regain her memory. He takes her out to show her some places that might enable her to remember. He takes her to the university where she attends. He also escorts her to a band room in his high school in hopes that she will remember being a singer of a band group. Frustrated, Shin tries to kiss her. However, the young girl dodges him. He realizes he's just a stranger without her memories of their relationship. Shin informs their friend Toma of what has happened, and the three meet in a restaurant. Toma and Shin introduce themselves to the young girl and tell her they had been her childhood friend. They tell her stories of their youth. Shortly after, she decides to return to her daily routine to regain her recollection of her past, and both Shin and Toma agree. Afterward, Shin escorts her to work. Upon arriving at the cafe, the young girl notices that her manager, Waka, has a different personality than what she had known, furthering her confusion. Later that day, the young girl asks her female co-workers, Sawa and Mine, about her accident. She soon discovers an entirely different story from what she could remember. She learns that the trip to the island has happened, but the meteor shower never did. Another fact is that Iki and Kent are not employees of their cafe. Unable to comprehend everything, she plans to ask Shin about the accident. Afterward, the young girl makes her way home. Coincidentally, she meets the green-haired man. According to her co-workers, this man joined her search party when she fell from the cliff. They chat for a while, but the squealing sound of a train passing by covers his voice, and the young girl cannot hear his words. Shin appears and runs to her. Meanwhile, the man disappears. As the young girl and Shin sit by the park, he admits to her that her amnesia is taking an enormous toll on him, which he had not expected. The thought of losing her memories makes him feel down. After a while, the young girl asks him about the accident. Shin only tells her that it was all his fault, not wanting to provide more details about the mishap and asks her for forgiveness. Out of nowhere, a voice calls out, asking the young girl if she can hear him. Recognizing this voice, she stands up and searches for its source. She hopes that it is who she thinks it is. This girl found herself in such a bizarre point in her life, where she's a stranger to her own very self. She doesn't have much to her name, she doesn't even know what it is, only spirals of disjointed and distorted memories that don't even correlate to her current reality. It's one mystery after another, but our unnamed heroine will stop at nothing until she finally makes sense of the world around her, until she has her memories, her proof of existence back, one step at a time. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.